Hi, it's Martin Phillip, and I'm here with Arlo and Anthem behind the camera, and we're back for another installment of this King Arthur Bake With Us uh, video series that we're doing. And uh, today we're going to make bagels. It's a little gray, uh, but the house smells good. We've got one batch out of the oven already, and uh, we're going to show you how to get through the entire process today, and somehow we're going to do it in about half an hour. I'm not sure if it's going to work. We're going to give it a shot. Um, bagels. I didn't eat a good bagel until I was well into college. I didn't grow up with them. We ate them some when I was a little bit younger, but it was usually out of a freezer package. Uh, maybe some people will remember those. Uh, but after college, I moved to New York City eventually and started eating the bagels at H&H, &H, and that kind of opened my eyes to a whole new realm of things. Um, and I've enjoyed bagels over the years and trying to make them. Uh, and then at one point I went to Portland uh, to my friend Allison Reed's Bakery uh, Scratch Baking Company in South Portland and Allison was making some bagels that were yet another level above what I was used to and um, so I started working on my own recipe uh, which was an adaptation of what they're doing at Scratch. So that's what I'm going to show you today. The website, uh, the King Arthur Flower website has the recipe. It's called Martin's Bagels. And some people may balk at the fact that it's a two-day recipe. Um, I do it that way because I think it gives you the most flavor. It's also the way that bagels are most commonly made um, by bageleries. And so I like the process. I like the crust that it gives. Um, but thankfully on the website, if you only have a few hours, there are some shorter versions um, available for you to follow. Um, so uh, let me actually, I'm going to read uh, just a little bit briefly. I promise it won't take that long. Um, I'll read what I've said about bagels before. Bagels are a zany, misfit member of the baked goods family. Prone to outlandish ties, wild hair, and loud laughing, they dance comfortably, albeit awkwardly, in front of others while pan bread and soft rolls, baguettes and shortcakes, stand on the sidelines too cool to engage. The process of making bagels may seem complicated. Multiple steps spread across two days, a bath in boiling water before baking, what? But once the schedule is understood, it can be planned for and the result is worth the work. On day one, a poolish is mixed a few hours before the final dough. The dough rises for a bit and then is chilled overnight, covered in the refrigerator before the dividing, final shaping, boiling, and baking on day two. If you are tentative, if you fear exposure or risk, I say jump in. Put on your dancing shoes or your best ugly sweater and try moonwalking. You might just be the life of the breakfast party. All right, so let's have a party here and make some bagels. Okay. So these are out of the oven just moments ago. We'll set those aside. Um, and we have this dough that we mixed yesterday. Will you jump in here and help me uh, pre-shape these round? Can okay. You for a minute? Yeah. So this is a dough that we mixed yesterday, and I've already divided it into pieces. The recipe on the website, and again, if you're looking for this particular one, we have a bunch to choose from. If you're looking for this particular one, Look for the one that says, uh, this is just simply Martin's Bagels. Um, this dough uh, was taken out of the fridge a couple hours ago, and it's coming up in temperature, and we're making nice, even, tight, round balls like that. And this is an all-white dough, and I'm actually using all-purpose flour. Um, a lot of times people use bread flour or a stronger flour for bagels. And that's certainly an option. I like this style of bagel. It happens to call for all-purpose all flour. All-purpose flour happens to be the only flour that we have in the house right now, and we're down to kind of the last of it. So, um, Arlo and I have been baking a bunch. Anthem's been baking a bunch. Yesterday we made um, we made baked donuts, and I have to say that was like that was a treat. We do a lot of <laughs> we do a lot of savory stuff here so uh, and I don't do a lot of sweet baking it's just kind of not my wheel I mean I do it I don't do it as much as bread bread is my thing okay I make a lot of pie I, make a lot of pie. I do like pie I'll definitely eat pie 
Um, so those, there are our uh, balls that are divided. Um, the recipe makes a dozen, just so you know. The recipe makes a dozen. Okay. So Anthony, will come in here a little bit. So these are some that I divided and rounded a few minutes ago, maybe like 20 minutes ago or so. And I just want to show you the shaping technique that I like to use, and I think it's particularly helpful for people. Um, incidentally, on the website, Kai did an article, uh, a great blog post that went up in January on the King Arthur Flower blog section, which uh, tells you a bunch of different ways to shape bagels. Um, like everything else, and I've said it before recently, shaping is uh, a destination. You want to get there. How you get there can vary by baker and bakery. Um, but I'm going to show you an easy way that I enjoy shaping bagels. It's one of many ways to do it. Um, so these are rounded. They're pretty well relaxed. I poke my finger into the middle. Why don't you do one while I talk? So like this? Yep. Poke it all the way through until you hit the counter. Yep. And then I just break through with my fingers and I just twirl it like this. Can you see that? I twirl it. And if they're well relaxed, they stretch out pretty well. If you rush the process a little bit, it'll feel like they're too tuggy. They're hard to stretch. Like yeah, perfect. Perfect. And just go in until it sort of gets a little bit more stretchy like that. And then set them on a floured surface and let them relax. That yeah, that's good. That's good. You just keep going. Don't you? It's a very strong dough. It's okay to stretch it out a little bit. You can do. You know, you can be a gunslinger if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So again, I, in the very exact middle, I push my finger through. Might have gone a little bit over on this one. Uh, if you, if they, if you, no, nah, that's okay. You're good. If we don't stretch them enough, they'll close. The holes will close during boiling and baking. And so you can over, you can over stretch a little bit and it's going to be okay. Even a misshapen bagel is a delicious bagel. Look through the bagel bin your next time you're at the grocery, you know, and uh, you'll notice that they're not all exactly the same. It's part of the allure of the bagel. It's handmade. Uh, well, these are handmade. They're, often these days they're machined, but it's different. Okay. So, these guys need to relax for just a little bit. Now, one thing that you could do at this stage, a lot of people like to chill the bagel before baking. If you're going to chill it, this is when you would do it. You'd put it on a flour board or a flour piece of parchment or a parchment piece of parchment with cornmeal on it or something like that. And then put it in the fridge for a couple hours or even overnight. Most professional bagel shops do chill shaped bagels like this. Um, at uh, scratch they don't and it gives a little bit more tender but super flavorful bagel okay so these are the ones that I shaped maybe 20 minutes ago and they look good they're soft I'm gonna give them just a tiny additional stretch and then I'm gonna go in my pot can handle three at a time and so I'm going to go in, one, two, three. Um, this mixture on the recipe, it calls for bar barley malt, and I don't have any barley malt right now. Um, and so I use a little bit of molasses. Molasses is fine, and I salt the water too, just a little bit. Um, this quantity of water that I have, if you bit boiled in a big pot, like a big pasta pot or something like that, we have a larger volume of water, it won't be as impacted by the addition of the bagels. It won't cool down. So I'm just putting the lid on for a second just to help them, um, just to help the water come back up to temp. So see how I'm back at a boil. It's like 60, 90 seconds, something like that. And then I flip. Try not to splatter. I don't have my spider, you know, a nice tool is what they call a spider uh, in kitchens, but this, you know, slotted spoon works pretty well. 60, 90 seconds on each side. And that's pretty good. Should we do some plain, some seated? Is that what you guys want? Sure. Whatever. Okay. So, um, you can put them on a, I like to put them across a cloth for just a second so they're not quite as sloppy. Uh, you don't have to do that. So I'll do some seeded. Yeah, sure, sure. They're hot, but they're not um, dangerously hot. Just be careful. You can uh, 
you can burn yourself. I guess after like 14 years of professional baking, people say I have Teflon hands. I don't know if that's the case. Um, okay, so there are three, and then I'll go back in the pot with another three. And again, I'm stretching them just slightly as they go in, just slightly as they go in like that. And then maybe I'll put this lid on for just a second so that they come back up to temperature. Okay, so maybe I talk for just a second about um, what we can bake on. So I'm going to bake, um, I do these six at a time. Six will fit on a half sheet tray, uh, and I like this parchment. It comes in a bag from this company called King Arthur Flour, and I use a lot of it. Um, these half sheet trays, uh, size parchment pieces. So in the stone, I actually have my baking steel in there heating up. And so I'm gonna bake these directly on the steel. If you had a baking stone that was shaped like this, you could do that as well. I'm also gonna show you how to do it on a sheet tray, which is perfectly fine. Most of the bagels in the world are baked on a sheet tray. Um, so I'm just putting them on here like that. Let's see what we got. Let's see how many things I can juggle at once here. What do you think? Okay. So I'll give those just a second. Do you want to start uh, with these guys? Those aren't quite ready. Are these ready? Okay, so we've got another one to boil here in a second. All right. So maybe we'll just leave these plain. Um, for toppings today, I've got this everything bagel topping um, that we have at work. Um, and I happen to have a jar at home. I got lucky. Um, but Plain is just fine. I mean, a plain bagel with cream cheese or avocado or smoked salmon and onion and capers. I mean, there are a hundred ways to do it. Um, that's just fine. So, I'll show you how we do this. This is like the old magic tablecloth trick where I pull the tablecloth out from under the dishes. So I just put it in there and then I slide it back. And you can see they immediately start going. Okay, so there's that one. Will you set, a, will you set 18 minutes for me? Pretty please. 18? 18 sounds good. Okay, so these are moving. The dough is up to, uh, the dough is coming up to room temperature. They feel pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go right back in here with these. Thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. Okay, put the lid on for a second. And there's that. Now, for the, um, I think what I'll do is, I'm gonna boil these three and then I'll do the mix and then I'll come back for a second. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll boil these three. Do you want to keep an eye on this for a second while I start the mix? Sure. Okay, you keep an eye and I'll, I'll come over here and help you turn it over, okay? Okay. Uh, all right, Anthony, come back over here and we're gonna do the mix real quickly. Just move these over. So I'm gonna show you how to do the mix, um, which is really no big deal. Can we flip them? Yeah, we can flip them, let's sit here. One, two, Sometimes if you fold them toward the center of the pan and just let them bounce off each other, they'll be fine. They, aren't, they, they usually will not stick to one another. So why don't you count to say 25 and then you're gonna put them on this sheet tray over here, watch. A little bit of, of cornmeal. Yeah, I just do them plain, that's fine. We'll do this back just plain. A little bit of cornmeal and then, so you can start transferring now. That one, pat it on there and then set it on the tray. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Okay. So, we're going to do the mix. So, again, I'm using all-purpose flour. It's not the most common flour for bagels. A lot of people use a bread flour or even a high-gluten flour. Nothing, I don't have anything against that. Um, use the flour you have. How are you doing? You ready for three more? Okay. Can you just fluff them in there? Give them a little stretch as you go over. Remember, just a little tug. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So in the bowl, I have all-purpose flour. I've got salt and a little bit of yeast. And just a little 
Just go one at a time, yeah. Or two. All right. You're doing a great job, buddy. Okay. So, all-purpose flour, salt and yeast. Um, now, I have my water pre-measured. House is cold still. We got a fire going today. Uh, I don't remember what day. I feel like recently it was warm, but now we're back to like cold a little bit yeah, again. So wet and rainy. Wet and rainy. Yep. So this water is just a little bit warm. Uh, I think for our house, I have that water about 105 degrees or so. Um, yeah. Flip them. Uh, count to 25 and then flip them. Okay. With the lid on. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so last night I started this mixture, which is a pre-ferment, uh, and we call it a poolish because it's a liquid mix mixture, pancake batter consistency of flour, water, and a pinch of yeast or so. So I've got my water in the bowl, and I'm adding this. Why use this? The reason why we use this, and the reason the recipe takes two days, is because this is where a lot of the flavor comes from. Um, like some other things, well, that was we haven't flipped them yet, right? Okay, one, two, and three. There we go. Count to 25 and then take them off. Um, this is where the flavor comes from. This is where a lot of the flavor comes from, you know. Should I put them in the sesame seed? Just do plain, that's fine. We'll do a plain batch. Um, this is where flavor comes from. It's a poolish. <laughs> and similar to a lot of things that we cook or, form, or ferment or smoke, uh, it takes time. You can't, there are, no, uh, there are no shortcuts. So it's not that you can't make a good bagel in a few hours. You can. Uh, this is the bagel that I prefer. Uh, make the bagel that you love. So that's the poolish. And here's a little tip. Um, if you have sourdough culture and you want to sub that instead of yeast in this and make a bagel that has a more sour flavor profile, um, go for it. Definitely do that. And that's a delicious way to make bagels. Okay, so. I think turn the water off for right now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You're doing a great job, Arlo. I'm just throwing him in. Anthem, who's behind the camera, um, tested these bagels when I was writing the book and did a great job. And so we're getting the next, we're training the next generation of uh, bagel bakers here today. Okay, dry ingredients. Should earn. You wanna peek at the uh, Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. While I'm doing this, go ahead and load those, uh, load those bagels that you just put on the tray into the oven, would you? Sure. Go ahead and load those. Bottom right. Bottom right, just like that. You got it. Thank you. Okay. That's basically the mix. Uh, I might gather it just a little bit with this spatula, but. And just give it a few folds, kind of like that. Um, if this looks like a small amount of dough, it's because I'm, my demo mix here is only a half batch. Um, I'm down to my last like 200 grams of flour. So I'm just, I wanted to show you the mix, but I'm just doing it with a smaller amount. Okay, that's basically, am I throwing that? Thank you. Um, so that's the mix. Now, come over here and look for just a second, Anthem. Um, you can see that we don't have a lot of gluten development yet. This is what we would sort of say is like a shaggy dough. It still looks a little bit lumpy. We know that it's fully homogenous because we mixed the salt and yeast into the flour. It's okay. Um, but you can tell that it's not a well-developed dough yet. But so it's gonna get two hours at room temperature to rise with, with one fold at the halfway point, with one fold at the halfway point. And by the time we get to um, the end of that first hour, when you go in there with your um, scraper for the fold, you're gonna see that the dough is already smoothing out. Okay. So.
So maybe I give one more fold and then literally we're just going to cover it and leave it. Okay, let me wash my hands. These are not fully uh, cooled yet, and as they cool, they're going to set up some more. But I just wanted to sort of show you what the how these are a little bit more open in what we would call the crumb structure or the alveolar structure. These are slightly more open than what uh, a normal bagel might be, but I really like the eating quality of these and um, and we should be able to smell a little bit of the fermentation. We'll smell a little bit of the uh, poolish that we put in here. And like I said, if you seed that pre-ferment with sourdough culture, um, it's, a, it's a really nice way to add additional flavor and really uh, really add a note that I think is surprisingly good and different. Do you want the seeded or the plain? Get the seeded. Seeded? Okay. Cheers. <laughs> mm, these are good. Like chewy and... Plenty of chew. But the bagel itself has more like... It has good... Sour. It smells like bread, yeah. It smells mm -hmm. like bread. Sometimes bagels don't necessarily have that fermentation nice nose, so they're really good. All right. I guess that's it. I think we did it. Um, we have the bagels in the oven. Uh, we'll take a couple pictures and post those when they come out so that everybody can see them. And I don't know. Are we going to do baked donuts this week? What do you think? Why not? Why not? They're pretty good. All right, Anthem's giving the thumbs up for baked donuts, so maybe we'll do baked donuts uh, in a couple days. Um, I guess I would just say thank you for coming along, and this is just a view into how we are um, doing our best to manage these challenging days. Um, and the warm bagels are helping, and I hope that you and yours stay well, and we'll see you soon for possibly some baked donuts. Yeah, okay. All right. Take care. Cheers.